When we see a limit problem like this, our go-to method is direct substitution. So we would plug in two, but unfortunately, using this method produces zero over zero, which is known as indeterminate form. And we never say that something is equal to zero over zero. That is not mathematically correct. So what we need to do in a case like this is factor. And then I would cancel my common factors from the top and bottom, and I'd be left with the limit as x approaches two of x plus six, then use direct substitution, two plus six is equal to eight. This is the method that we learned in a previous topic. Today, we're going to learn a new way to evaluate limits when we wind up with indeterminate form. This way is called L'Hopital's rule, and it's also spelled like that. And L'Hopital's rule states that if the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x produces the indeterminate form of 0 over 0 or plus or minus infinity over infinity, and f and g are differentiable, then the limit as x approaches c of f of x over g of x equals the limit as x approaches c of f prime of x or over g prime of x. So essentially what L'Hopital's rule states is it gives us another way to solve if we initially wind up with indeterminate form in the form of zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over infinity. And that way is with derivatives, which is why we couldn't do it in chapter one. We didn't know how to take derivatives yet. Make sure that you never write that the limit of a function is equal to zero over zero or equal to plus or minus infinity over infinity. We never say something is equal to zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over infinity. This is not the actual answer. This is just indeterminate form. And it's just indicating to us that we need to dig deeper and figure out what the actual answer is. Do not write equals zero over zero or equals plus or minus infinity over infinity. The correct way to say it would be that it produces the indeterminate form of zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over infinity. Let's practice determining when it's appropriate to apply L'Hopital's rule. We have three examples here and we need to determine which one of these we're going to need L'Hopital's rule for. So remember that we can only use L'Hopital's rule when we have indeterminate form. So when we have zero over zero or plus or minus infinity over infinity. And our first step is always to test the limits of the top and the bottom separately. So I'm going to test the limit of the top. Limit as x approaches pi of cosine x is equal to the cosine of pi, which is equal to negative one. So I can already see that my numerator is negative one. That means that this is not going to be a problem where we apply L'Hopital's rule. If we were to plug in pi to the denominator, if we were finding the limit as x approaches pi of x minus pi, we would get zero. So we would have negative one over zero, but that's a different problem. And we use a different method to solve that. It's not zero over zero. Let's test this second one. So on the, on the numerator, we will test limit as x approaches pi of cosine x over two. So we are looking for the cosine of pi over two. If we use direct substitution, cosine of pi over two is equal to zero. Maybe this is a potential contender for L'Hopital's rule. So now we will test the denominator. Limit as x approaches pi of x is equal to pi. So this limit would just be equal to zero. Zero over pi is equal to zero. Let's test our third one. First, we'll test the numerator. Limit as x approaches pi of cosine x plus one. Now we'll plug in pi, so this is equal to cosine pi plus one, or negative one plus one, which is zero. So our numerator, when we test that one, that's equal to zero. And then our limit of the denominator, the limit as x approaches pi of x minus pi, that is equal to pi minus pi, or zero. So this one, we get the indeterminate form of zero over zero when we try to take this limit. Do not write equals zero over zero. That is not the answer. That is not what we write. You should not be writing that. Instead, how you indicate that, you say this produces the indeterminate form zero over zero. Now that we've determined that this is a situation where we would apply L'Hopital's rule, let's practice applying it. So this doesn't matter if you're on a multiple choice question because no one looks at your work for the multiple choice, but if you're on a free response, you need to indicate somewhere in your work that you're using L'Hopital's rule. So I like to write by L'Hopital's rule, and then you can start actually evaluating. So first thing is to copy down the, the original problem. And then we can take the derivative of the numerator and denominator. But we need to keep the limit notation on there. So it's still limit as x goes to pi. But then L'Hopital's rule allows us to take the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. So if, the, if we're taking the derivative of cosine x, that is negative sine x. And the derivative of 1 is 0. And then we have x minus pi, pi is a constant, so that derivative is zero, and then the derivative of x is one. So now we have a more solvable problem that's not gonna produce indeterminate form. 
we are getting the limit as x approaches pi of negative sine x. And now we can use direct substitution. So we're finding negative sine of pi. The sine of pi is 0, so this is equal to 0. Let's practice another example. Find the limit as x approaches 9 of this function. Remember, before we start applying L'Hopital's rule, we need to verify that this is a problem that we can use the rule on. So we're going to check the numerator and denominator and make sure that they both produce 0, or infinity or negative infinity. So first, we'll find the limit as x approaches 9 of x squared minus 5x minus 36, and we'll use direct substitution here. This is equal to 0. Now let's test the denominator. We'll take the limit as x approaches 9 of x minus 9. Using direct substitution, we get 9 minus 9, which is equal to 0. So this tells us that we have the indeterminate form of 0 over 0, and we need to write that out, especially if you're on a free response question. Then our next step is to actually apply L'Hopital's rule. And remember, you need to write by L'Hopital's rule before you start applying. So we're going to write by L'Hopital's rule. So by L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches 9 of this is equal to the limit as x approaches 9 of, and then we'll take the derivative of numerator and denominator. The derivative of the numerator is 2x minus 5, and the derivative of the denominator is 1. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 9 of 2x minus 5. And now we can use direct substitution. So it's equal to 2 times 9 minus 5, 18 minus 5, which is equal to 13. So that would be the actual value of our limit. Let's practice another example. Find the limit as x approaches 2 pi of this function. Remember, before we start, we need to first test and make sure that this is a problem where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to test the numerator and denominator separately. To find the limit of the numerator, I'm going to use direct substitution. So this is equal to 3 times the sine of 2 pi. The sine of 2 pi equals 0, so 3 times 0 is 0. And now I will test the denominator. And again, using direct substitution, I get 2 pi over 2 minus pi. This is pi minus pi, which is equal to 0. So this is a situation where we can use L'Hopital's rule because we are getting the indeterminate form of 0 over 0. But we need to write this produces the indeterminate form 0 over 0. We do not write equals 0 over 0 up here. That is not the answer. And now we can start using L'Hopital's rule. In order to justify what we're doing, we need to write by L'Hopital's rule, especially if you're on an FRQ. So by L'Hopital's rule, and then we copy down the original problem. And then what L'Hopital's rule allows us to do is that we can take the derivative of numerator and denominator. So we're still keeping the limit notation on there because we haven't taken the limit yet. But now we can find the derivative of 3 sine x, which is equal to 3 cosine x. And then we take the derivative of x over 2 minus pi. This is just 1 half, because this is really 1 half x minus pi. Derivative of pi is 0 because it's a constant. And then derivative of this one is 1 half. So now we have a new problem that's going to be a little bit easier to use direct substitution on. So now I'm going to plug 2 pi in for x. The cosine of 2 pi is 1. So what we're getting is 3 divided by 1 half which is equal to 6. So that is the limit of this function. It's not 0 over 0, it's 6. And we found that by using L'Hopital's rule. Let's practice another example. Find the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 4x over 3x. First, I'm going to test the numerator and denominator separately to make sure that we can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'll first find the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 4x. If I were to use direct substitution here, I'd substitute infinity in for x, and then I get the natural log of an infinitely large number, which is an infinitely large number. Now let's test the denominator. Limit as x approaches infinity of 3x, I would get 3 times an infinitely large number, which is another infinitely large number. So if we were to get infinity over infinity, that's not the answer, but that's the indeterminate form that indicates to us that we can use L'Hopital's rule. Now we can use L'Hopital's rule. So now we're going to keep the limit definition on there, or we're going to keep the limit on the front. It's still limit as x approaches infinity, but then we're going to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of the numerator, we have a natural log, so it's going to be 1 over 4x times 4. Because this is a chain rule problem, we need to take the derivative of the inside after we take the derivative of the entire thing. And then the derivative of 3x is just 3. So now we have the limit as x approaches infinity, of 4 over 4x, or just 1 over x, all over 3. And now we can use direct substitution. So if we substitute in infinity here, 1 over infinity is very close to 0. So we're going to say that that's 0. So we would get 0 over 3, which is equal to 0. That is the actual limit here.
Here's another example. Let's first test the numerator and denominator. The natural log of 1 is equal to 0. The denominator is also equal to 0 when we use direct substitution. So this produces the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So now keeping the limit notation on the front, we're going to take the derivative of the numerator and denominator separately. The derivative of the natural log of negative x is equal to 1 over negative x times negative 1. We had to use the chain rule here. First we did 1 over u, with u being negative x, and then we took the derivative of u, which is negative 1. And now we'll do the denominator. That's going to be 12x squared minus 2. And this gives us a problem that is not going to produce indeterminate form. So now we can use direct substitution again and see what we get. This is equal to negative 1 tenth. So that is the actual value of our limit. Find the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x times e to the negative x. When I'm looking at this problem, I see a bit of an issue. We've only used L'Hopital's rule before with quotients, where we have something in the numerator and something in the denominator. So I'm actually going to rewrite this problem as the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x over e to the positive x, because I can move that e to the negative x to the denominator and make the exponent positive. That's one of our exponent rules. Now I will test the numerator and denominator to see if I get indeterminate form. This did produce the indeterminate form of infinity over infinity. So this means that I can use L'Hopital's rule. By L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches infinity of 4x over e to the x equals the limit as x approaches infinity, and now I take derivative of numerator and denominator. Derivative of the numerator is 4, derivative of the, of the denominator is e to the x, and now I can use direct substitution. So now I get rid of my limit notation. It's equal to 4 over e to the power of infinity, or infinity. And 4 over an infinitely large number is going to be equal to 0. This means that this limit is equal to 0. Now we're going to practice a sample free response question. The table below shows selected values of the twice differentiable function f of x. Find the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of 3x over 7x squared plus 14x. And we have a table of values here with f of x and f prime of x. First, I'm going to establish that we are going to need to use L'Hopital's rule here. So I'm going to find the limit of the numerator and denominator separately. So when I take my limit of the numerator, I get limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of 3x. So, and then I'm going to use direct substitution to plug in negative 2. So I'll get f of 3 times negative 2. This is f of negative 6. And if we look at our table, f of negative 6 equals 0. So our numerator produces 0. Let's check our denominator. This also produces 0. At this point, I'm going to jump down to my FRQ explanation so I can model how to do a proper explanation for a free response question. So when you're doing L'Hopital's rule, you need five things in your free response explanation. First, you need to address the differentiability because L'Hopital's rule requires that the numerator and denominator are differentiable. So the first part of your explanation should go, since the numerator and the denominator are differentiable. And then in the next part of your explanation, you need to address that you've got indeterminate form when you checked the numerator and denominator separately. Now I've addressed all the conditions for L'Hopital's rule that need to be met. So now I'm going to write by L'Hopital's rule. This is very important. And then after we write by L'Hopital's rule, then we write down the original function. So I'm going to bring this down. And then lastly, I can apply L'Hopital's rule and actually solve my problem. So now I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches negative 2. And then to take the derivative of this numerator, this is going to be a chain rule problem because we have a function stuck inside of the function f. So first, we just take f prime of 3x, and then we multiply it by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3. And then in the denominator, the derivative will be 14x plus 14. Now I'm going to use direct substitution and plug in negative 2. And I can see in my table that f prime of negative 6 equals 6. So this will be 6 times 3, which is 18. And then negative 28 plus 14 is negative 14. So this means that the limit as x approaches negative 2 of this function is 18 over negative 14, or negative 9 sevenths. However, you can leave it as negative 18 fourteenths on the FRQ. The proper explanation is since f of x and the function y equals 7x squared plus 14x are differentiable, and the limit as x approaches negative 2 of f of 3x equals 0, and the limit as x approaches negative 2 of 7x squared plus 14x equals 0, which produces the indeterminate form 0 over 0, by L'Hopital's rule, and then I solve. 
That's how you write a proper explanation. Let's practice another AP style FRQ. Let f be the function defined by f of x equals negative x, and let h be the function defined by h of x equals e to the x minus 2x minus cosine of x. Let j of x equal f of x divided by h of x. Find the limit as x approaches 0 of j of x. So first, we need to address the differentiability. We need to say that the numerator and denominator are both differentiable. And if we look at these functions, negative x and this function, those are both ones that we can find the derivative of. So our answer will start since f of x and h of x are differentiable. And now we need to address that we get indeterminate form if we try direct substitution right away. So we're looking for the limit as x approaches 0 of j of x, but we know j of x equals f of x over h of x. So we're really looking for the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x over h of x. So we need to justify that this produces indeterminate form without L'Hopital's rule. Now we've addressed the indeterminate form. And the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x equals 0, and the limit as x approaches 0 of this function equals 0, which produces the indeterminate form 0 over 0. And now we write those three words by L'Hopital's rule. And then we copy down the original function. And we do need to copy down j of x and then switch it to f of x over h of x. And now we're finally ready to use L'Hopital's rule and take the derivative. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of negative 1 over e to the x minus 2 plus sine of x. And now we can use direct substitution. e to the power of 0 is 1. So this is equal to negative 1 over 1 minus 2 plus 0, or negative 1 over negative 1. Negative 1 over negative 1 is positive 1. So that means that our limit as x approaches 0 of j of x equals positive 1. And this is our proper explanation that meets all the criteria for an FRQ. There's one more topic that I want to cover, and that is repeatedly applying L'Hopital's rule. If we're asked to find the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed over e to the power of 3x, first we test the numerator and denominator. This produces the indeterminate form of, of infinity over infinity. So now what we need to do is apply L'Hopital's rule. By L'Hopital's rule, the limit as x approaches infinity of the original function is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of, and now we take the derivative. So this is 3x squared over e to the power of 3x times 3, because this is a chain rule problem. We have to include the derivative of, the, of our u. So then we can actually rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared over 3e to the power of 3x, and then we can cancel the 3s. And this is the point where, where we would typically plug in and use direct substitution and then get our answer. But the problem is if we plug in infinity here, we get infinity squared over e to the power of 3 infinity, which is still infinity over infinity, indeterminate form. So in that case, what we need to do is apply L'Hopital's rule again and take the derivative of this again. Now we get the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x over 3e to the power of 3x. And if we plug in infinity here, we are still getting infinity over infinity, our indeterminate form. So we take the derivative again. And at this point, if we plug it into the numerator, we, we just get 2. So we're no longer going to be getting indeterminate form. Now we can use direct substitution. So we get 2 over 3e to the power of 3 times infinity. And that is an infinitely large number times 3. So we get 2 over infinity, which is equal to 0 when we're talking in the terms of limits. So this would be our answer to this problem. The takeaway here is that you can apply L'Hopital's rule more than once if you need to.